Adam and Jamie find a way to cut their power bill. <laughs> Our very own mad scientists have downloaded plans for free energy devices from the internet and are going to test them out with the help of Dr. Gio Hanzi of MIT. First up, a contraption which, it is claimed, can suck energy from the curvature of space. Gentlemen, what we have here is a G-strain amplifier, which I built from parts you find at Radio Shack. G-strain, as G -strain. opposed to F-strain. The G-strain amplifier looks suspiciously like what we on planet Earth call a ring oscillator. Something you might find in a flashing bicycle light. In this experiment, a lithium battery is hooked up to a motor. An identical battery is hooked up to a motor and a so-called G-strain amplifier. According to the plans, the second motor will keep running longer by drawing on the cosmic energy of the universe. Use the force, guys. Myth turn Christine is roped in to keep her eye on the experiment. Okay, is, is there any paint you want me to watch dry as well? No, just watch carefully <laughs> and then the minute that it stops, let us you know and hit the timer, okay? Okay. All right. So now we wait in the name of science. Well, we're up to 40 minutes and I'm still not asleep. <laughs> it's still going. Then, in an intriguing development, one motor slows down. Could free energy be keeping the other going? No dice. It's the free energy motor that's on the wane. The experiment is left to run all day, just in case cosmic energy makes a late appearance. Don't hold your breath. Okay, so it's been a day. Have we managed to suck power from the curvature of space? Well, I see one motor going and one motor not going. And guess what? The motor that's not going is the free energy device. So that means that this is not free energy. It's using energy. Yeah. So could we, from here on in, in perpetuity, stop referring to this as a G-strain amplifier and call it a ring oscillator? Ring oscillator. I'd be happy to do that. So this you know, one busted. We can put it to bed. And now busted. let's send our lawyers after the guys who charge us 25 bucks for this little diagram. In the myth of free energy, Adams found plans on the internet for a device that claims to suck power from solar rays. I've got one here that I'm actually kind of jazzed about. It's basically a temperature wheel, sometimes called a Minto wheel after its inventor. The temperature wheel consists of pairs of tanks joined by a pipe. Half of the tanks are filled with propane and placed in water. When the water is heated by the sun, the propane vaporizes and condenses in the top tanks, which become heavier, and the wheel rotates. The upshot? Free energy. Intoxicated by the sweet scent of power, Adam gets down to work. With world domination in his sights, he ropes in his evil accomplice and metal expert, Scotty. Can you do a fillet weld in there, or do you have to... Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. I've bridged bigger gaps than that before. Scotty welds at Adam Slots, and before you can say, free energy my foot, the temperature wheel takes shape. I'm not sure what it's going to do, but it looks cool. <laughs> Doesn't it, though? So you're going to put some kind of flammable liquid in all these and then light them all off at the same time? Fill half of them full of propane, shoot a bullet, light it on fire, the whole thing... <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know, what I can't wait for is the uh, look on the guy's face when I bring these in to have them filled with propane. <laughs> there ought to be a law against that. <laughs> there probably is. Um, make that definitely. Um, Adam's not finding this such a gas after all. Okay. Sorry about that. Free energy suddenly seems further away than ever as his temperature wheel springs a leak. This is a problem because uh, we've got propane leaking out of a hole. We can't weld that hole until we get rid of all the propane, like all of it. We have to go back to the shop now and I don't know what the hell we're going to do. In the myth of free energy, Adam's been deflated by the discovery that his temperature wheel leaks gas. He's on a collision course with his welder, Scotty. I've got a bone to pick with you. We tried filling these things with propane today. Because I can smell it. Yeah, it's leaking out of your weld. Scotty protests that she didn't know Adam intended to fill the tanks with propane. Well, first I said that I needed gas-tight welds from you. The people that filled this want nothing more to do with this. Sorry. Well, it looks like every possible thing that could be failing on my rig is actually failing. And I know this seems consistent, but 
There was a time I was really good at making things. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Adam comes up with an unusual solution to his leaking wheel. I am actually pulling a vacuum on each one of these pipes so that I can capillary some glue into the leaky or problematic areas of my welds and then cover over it with a... Uh, engine epoxy to eliminate all the problems you would have welding a casting to a steel pipe. Crazy glue. I need crazy glue. On goes the crazy glue, followed by some hard-wearing engine epoxy. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. For the temperature wheel to have any chance of success, it must be gas tight. Adam leaves the epoxy to set and turns his power-crazed mind to the next free energy device. What is next? The Bedini motor. The Bedini motor. You know, the Bedini motor is like the holy grail of the free energy freaks. It couldn't be simpler. A battery drives a motor, which spins up a flywheel, which charges wire coils, which in turn recharge the battery. And bingo, a perpetual motion or over-unity machine. It's important to keep an open mind and realize that all the principles that drive the over-unity machines operate outside of everything you've ever heard about science. MIT's Dr. Geo Holmesy has been helping the guys by assembling the contraption. And with his pedigree, they're quickly in business. Free energy, man. Here we go. Activate the modulator. Modulator activated. A modulator switches the motor on and off, so preserving power while the flywheel keeps on spinning, in theory, replenishing the battery. Okay, it's spinning up. I can hear it getting slower. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be. <laughs> I, I don't think I need a meter <laughs> for this one. In a sudden burst of free energy, the Bedini machine runs down. Sounds like my grandfather. Oh, getting sick is draining more from the battery on each cycle than it's putting back in when it recharges. That's the one big problem with perpetual motion machines. They're not perpetual. Over unity, huh? That's an efficiency of over 100%. Kind of makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, don't it? If you mean it makes me feel like I feel about the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus, yeah, that kind of warm and fuzzy, because it's a fantasy! The fortunes of free energy are now riding on the re-glued temperature wheel. If it comes unstuck, Adam's dreams of glory bite the dust. But nothing is leaking today. Everything is good. The temperature wheel stands in a tank of water, which will be heated by studio lights in place of the sun. Jamie's baffled by Adam's creation. I don't know what to think of this contraption. I think, in theory, it actually ought to work, uh, as I understand it. But, um, you know, actually come to think of it, I'm not really sure that I do understand it. The idea behind the Minto wheel is that these tanks are arranged in pairs, each one connected to its neighbor opposite the wheel. And there's some propane in here. Propane is a terrific natural refrigerant uh, and a coolant. It's got a boiling point that's below room temperature. So there's some propane in here, and when we heat it up with the water, it bubbles up into this tank, making it heavier. And as each one successively does that and gets heavier, the wheel starts turning. This is the idea. We'll see if it actually works. And before your very eyes, free energy is revealed to be as elusive as ever. I'm not getting satisfactory operation out of my wheel here. Come on! It's not happening. I think, I think I need to abandon the water because I think the propane tanks going through the water isn't working. The guys decide to change tactics and heat the tanks directly with the lights. Okay, so it starts to move. Adam just can't keep his hands off. Well, I know, I know, I'm impatient. We know this. I don't want it to get too hot. Oh, I'm seeing something. Is it moving? What do you think? trying to determine whether I think I'm, I'm seeing it move really slowly it's going this way with all the speed of continental drift the wheel is turning I get a full revolution I call this a solar generator <laughs> I don't care how slow it goes 
Come on, it's come breaking on. free. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's breaking free of the bonds of the energy conglomerates. <laughs> it's just slow. You know, it's silly. We're now working on almost three quarters of a full revolution. It is the slowest machine I've ever seen go, but it is going, and it's working on thermal energy. I don't think this is the kind of thing that's going to end up powering a generator at your house. I mean, the fastest machine that anyone's built from this, and I know I'll be corrected on this, but that I could research, the fastest machine yet built was like one revolution per minute. I mean, that's not a blistering energy producing speed. You know, maybe you could, I don't know what you could do, you know, fan your sheep or something at that speed. A solar sheep fan is hardly a revolution in power generation. And it's not even free energy. Strictly speaking, the temperature wheel is just an overly elaborate and highly inefficient solar generator. That. Free energy, hot air. <laughs>